It's, it's, it's Bobby, and we back. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Purpose in the Youth podcast. What's your favorite bearded man, Bobby? Today on the All show, right. we got my man, Andrew Miore. Welcome to the show, Yo, my man. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. What's going on? Nothing much here in California, indefinitely. <laughs> indefinitely. <laughs> right. That's a hell of a trip on how you got here. You weren't supposed to be here a week ago, and now you're... Now I'm here. You're here. Yeah. Which ate, is a- <laughs> ate pumpkin pie and then jumped on a, a free plane. <laughs> Dude, life just happens. You don't see these things happen. You just have to jump on the opportunity. Right. Absolutely. You're with your family for Thanksgiving. You got a text. Uh, we need to fly out to Los Angeles. We have some opportunities. Yeah, at 6 a.m. Dude, that is that yeah. is crazy. That is crazy. It's like a movie. It's it popping. Is. I'm a fan of it. You're a fan, obviously. Yeah. And you're in sunny California, so I mean, yeah. life could be... It was be like 27 degrees the day Philly, I left. Philly, yeah. All set with that. Who is Andrew Miore today, and how young is he? I am 23 years old. Okay. Um, I'm an artist, producer, engineer. You do it Italian all. Italian man. Italian man. You're a one-stop <laughs> shop. Yeah. And you grew up in Philly. Yes. Talk yeah. to me about what life was like growing up in Philly. I've been there a couple times. Yeah. Great, you know, steak and cheese. What is yes. life actually like growing up out there? It's interesting, man. Like, um, it's way different. Like when I wasn't doing music than like now. You know what I mean? Like, early life, it was like I lived on a navy base. I went to a Catholic school. Okay. Um, and you know, when my dad died, we kind of we moved to Cheltenham, which is like a suburb. And I started doing music, and it's rough. It's rough yeah. for the music stuff. You know what I mean? How old were you when your dad died? I was in fourth grade, so I don't want to say the wrong age and sound like I was an idiot. Yeah, yeah, okay, got fourth held grade. Back. Yeah. Damn. Do you mind if I ask what happened? He had lung cancer. Okay. He, he was he was in the Navy, so um, like the ships, there was asbestos, mm-hmm. and um, people smoked on the ships. He didn't smoke, so he got lung cancer, and then it turned into like pneumonia because wow, uh, the dentist poisoned him by accident. The dentist? Yeah. You know, like you sign a waiver. He had like yeah. a cavity filled, and like I think he got mercury poisoning, and it was just like a rat. Man, yeah, in fourth grade, that is so young to actually happen. Uh, right. Wow, man, that's th- we dived cr- right in. Yeah, man, I, and I love <laughs> that. Like I that. love that you just open up like yeah. that. I to I don't think I got to say it to you before, but I I try to tell these guests before I start these podcasts is this will go as far as you want. You mm-hmm. want to be is, I want this to be as as safe an environment as possible. So mm-hmm. uh, I love that. Thank you for sharing something like that that I know that is Always clearly clearly not easy to talk about. What other challenges did you face as a kid? Because hmm. that's obviously something very serious. But was there any anything else that was tough for you to to kind of um, overcome? I mean, it's just like been a lot of death stuff. Yeah. You know, what I mean, like uh, my best friend when I was five died. He had leukemia, so I kind of like got all of his toys and stuff. Like when I was young, it was crazy. Damn. But that was like my first experience, and it turned into like my friend's dad actually died two weeks before mine. Like, and I remember sitting at the funeral, like, damn, what if this happened to me? And then it did, and then um. You know, just stuff like that. My grandfather died right after that. Um, those are like the main obstacles, I guess. Yeah. And I had like bad anxiety from that for a while. But, you know, you get older, you learn from it. Yeah. So those are like the main struggles, I guess. Yeah. I always did like well in school and, and music. I used you, to be a dancer. Oh, you're a dancer. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Definitely Break the answer. What'd you do? Nah, bro. Tap, jazz, and ballet. <laughs> okay. I, I quit. I had to quit, man. <laughs> okay. I was in a Catholic school and there was 20 kids in the class. I had a crush on this girl. <laughs> And oh, I get a scholarship crush. to a Ukrainian ballet school. I walk in and the, and the girl from my class and I just I was like this is a wrap. My whole career gone. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. Wow. Meanwhile, I'd be the the man if I was in ballet. Tap right now. jazz, everything. Yeah. Man, that is dope. Right. I shouldn't have quit. You shouldn't have quit. No. Nah. And clearly, that kind of translates into obviously what we'll kind of get into is like the music. If mm-hmm. you're starting to enjoy the dancing, if you're starting to kind of mm-hmm. get jiggy with on the dance floor with the girls, you. Maybe that's what's interesting, you know, pulling you into, I guess, right. the music world. Right. Um, were there any certain lessons or values that you learned from your mother as time went? Actually, from, you know, obviously he, your father passed. Mm-hmm. W- w- how did she play as a role model for you? Because obviously with your father passing, that's... Mm-hmm. I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine. But mm-hmm. I would imagine that there were things you learned from your mother after an incident Dude, like that. everything. Um it's crazy. Like when I was younger, I was I was more like with my dad. I feel like like I, I liked him a lot. Like he was more lenient. You know yeah. what I mean? Like the, the type of fathers thing, like, are always the ones yeah, that let it slide. They're just like, man, please, just like <laughs> do what you're told. I'm not trying to do all this. Um, yep. You know, uh, like even down to eating. I was a picky eater growing up. Um, we were actually vegan for five years as a family, wow. five or six, because when he first got cancer, um, they were like, you can do chemotherapy, yada yada yada. But I mentioned my friend when I was five. He did chemo. 
like I watched him kind of lose his hair, like start like losing himself. So mm-hmm. it was like, I think that might have influenced them to be like, yo, let's not do this. So we went like macrobiotic vegan, the whole family. He was given like six months to live. He lived like six years. Um, I don't think he would have died if it wasn't for the pneumonia either. Like he ran a mile the day before he died with one lung. Like wow. he had the one was black. Um, but anyways, yeah, I was close to my dad. Um, my mom, like I was, oh, that related to the food. Like he, it would be like, I'd be eating and I'd be picky. He would stay at the table with me after dinner, like 15 minutes, like just eat five pieces of broccoli. Okay. Eat two pieces of broccoli. You can put chocolate sauce on it. <laughs> oh, it tastes bad. Cause there's chocolate on it. Fine. Don't eat it. Don't like, eat it. like that type of <laughs> he thing. He didn't care. Yeah. I was always But you cool were expected to eat everything on the plate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It turned into nothing. Yeah. No. <laughs> I would just always get out of it. Um, and I was, like, kind of more scared of my mom, I guess. She was, like, the Italian mother, you know what I mean? But as time went on and, like, he died, and I, just learning from her, seeing how she coped with it, like, just seeing how strong she is. I got a brother and a sister, you know what I mean? Yeah. She went from, Older like, brother or... Older brother, younger sister. Okay. Um, so you were in the middle. Yeah, the middle absolutely. Man. The, the middle, middle man, guy. of course. The middle the man. Best. Um, <laughs> I don't know, just seeing how strong she is, man, like, my relationship with her now is the best it's ever been. Like, it's just, it's incredible. I watched her, like go from having no friends and depressed to having a huge friend group goes out all the time goes on dates you know what i mean yeah it taught me a lot you know what i mean about like how you can overcome like anything yeah so i learned a lot from her yeah and, like that aspect. and you guys got closer as time went absolutely yeah what about uh in, being an italian family what's something mm-hmm. that differs you think than irish family or polish I family? Mean, christmas for one we have spaghetti i fry like three pounds of fish wow. and bread it um the desserts, the cooking, man. I know it's supposed the to be the best, is right? The cooking is insane. We make our own sauce. Yeah, I'll try to. Um, if I'm out here again in January or something, we'll, I'll still have like fudge and like pizza and all that. I'll bring some. Yeah, it's you gotta have it. It's crazy. Damn, it's a whole different. You know what? I I always kind of regret is when I was living in Boston, I didn't explore enough in like the north end of Boston, which is the like the Italian culture of Boston. Oh, really? And there's Mike's Pastries. There's all these great. I know there's an Italian great restaurants. Thing. Oh man, it is it is wow. still very Italian. Uh, but I'm always interested in, in learning about when you're, you know, you're talking about the, the typical Italian culture. Mm. I think of like Goodfellas or, right. or something from the <laughs> movies and I actually don't. It's not very wrong. No. It's pretty, it's pretty kind of, <laughs> it's, it's pretty, like that. It's very much so. But it's great. Like, you know, I'm going to the gym now, try to work on my image. It's like, bro, Italian food is not the way. Oh, cause it's, it's all calories. All it's all calories. carbs. It's all carbs. And my carbs. mom will be like, I'll be like, mom, I'm not trying to eat bread. I just made raviolis. I'm like, you gotta eat it up. Gotta eat She's all of it. Making you sit at that dinner table until yeah. it's all gone. Absolutely. Until it's all gone. What is something that you know now that you wish you had known your freshman year of high school? The style of music, man. Yeah. Like, like the main thing about my music career is that like I've switched genres like five times. You know what I mean? I was I'm a classically trained cellist. I was in orchestras. I had like a full ride to college for it and didn't go. You did? Yeah. Where? Millersville. Two weeks before. I said no. Why? Because the classical, well, first of all, it's more ruthless than this. And this is pretty ruthless. I mm-hmm. mean, it's probably similar to like the podcast world. Like everybody's trying to use you, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Stuff like that. But classical music is just insane. People Very. People will like stab you in the back. Like I- I've been to like regional orchestra, like like one competition. It's like being certain orchestras and like these kids, man, will gladly stab you in the back. Wow. It's crazy. Just for like a position or? Yeah. It's wild. So I did that. I was a jazz pianist for a while. Piano player. Mm. My pianist just always sounds like that. I got you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then uh, I did punk music for a while. I toured in punk bands, like Vans Warped Tour and stuff. Did you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, and then it turned amazing. into rap. Like, so I wish I knew like, that I could blend all these styles together, man. Like, The first time I heard rap was like when Carter Four dropped. I mean, I listen to like NWA, but like mm-hmm. that's out of date now, kind of. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, like the current stuff where mm-hmm. like the beats explore so many genres. And I was like, yo, I could just play cello on a rock inspired rap song. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, I wish I knew, like, I wish I thought of that. Cause I feel like if I knew that, I'd be. You were jumping around because you're like, I don't, I don't know if this yeah, is. Yeah, I was the one. jumping I like don't... this, this. I could just have been going like this the whole time. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've been in like six bands easily. Yeah. So I but that's that. clearly helped you Absolutely. to who you are now yeah. with producing I don't, music. I don't regret any of them for sure. They all made me who I am. But, you know, I mean, if, if you stick to the same thing for years, I believe there's no way you can not be successful in it. Yeah. If you, like, literally just put your mind to it for three years, same genre. You're taking like, all these different 
taste of music and mm-hmm. you're, you're just like curating it in the big pot and then producing something. Right. Uh, like I think of the first person I can think of that I think makes incredible music and I'm pretty is Justin Timberlake. Like yeah. his music is. I love. I don't I even know how to label Timberlake. it. Like just the beats, the way he uh-huh. sings. I mean, everything. Everything about his music is mm. is absolutely incredible. Right. Uh, yeah, his personality to, seems I mean, Timbaland, dope too. Right. Timbaland's the one that's right making the incredible beats. Right. Put out an album of like all five minute songs. It's like they never notice. Ten, <laughs> even ten minute songs. Yeah. It's even like, ten damn. minute songs. Yeah, he's a uh, he's an interesting one. For people that are listening that might not know what a music producer is. What's the simplest explanation you could give? You make the music behind, like, the artist. or um, And you influence kind of, like, what goes on. I feel like like people are always confused what a beat maker is versus producer. A producer is, like, super hands-on. You know what I mean? So I, like, I make the music. I'll do it with the artist there, too. Like, I'll, we'll cook up from scratch, like a band. I'll be like, yo, what sound are you going for? Let's lay some drums. Let's lay some everything. And then if they start writing to it, I might be like, yo, what if we went in this direction? It's like very much hands-on in the process. So you're not you're not putting yourself in a room by yourself and just like, okay, I want to make this. You're creating based on the needs of the artist. Mm-hmm. So you know Most of the time, if yeah. you're making a, ro- a record for this person, you know what mm-hmm. type of style to make versus right. – okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I like to build like that. Like Zero and I, my friend Zero um, – you know zero. Yeah. Don't know why I introduced him. But <laughs> people that <laughs> but are listening yeah, right. aren't gonna might My not know. Zero. Officially um, zero. Check him out. We have like a whole like we have our own flow. You know what I mean? Um, we know what we want to do. You know what I mean? We sit down. We can make a song in like forty five minutes, like written with an instrumental. <laughs> same with my man Deke. Like, um, there's a bunch of artists and that I work with that like we have like the same re- kind of relationship. Zeros is probably like we cook up the most though. Yeah, for sure. That's your day one, homie. Yeah, you, know, you guys that's, have that. That's my guy. Yeah, yeah that's your guy. Absolutely. Yeah, that's your guy. Yeah. That's why you guys are here together. It's like the right. di- the dynamic duo. Right. Absolutely. But that's that allows you to get to that that level where you can produce and write a whole written produce song in forty five minutes because you guys know each other. You know. Right. What yeah. he's expecting of you. What I'll, you can I'll expect lay a pad to him. and I'll just be like, Hey, Zero, you like that? He's like, Yeah. Like you know I do. And then he'll rap something like, How do you think of that? It's popping. Like, what? let's get it going. <laughs> yeah, we already know. Let's get it you going. Know? You've worked with uh, looking. At, I was looking at your list: Kevin Gates, mm-hmm. Toy Lanes, PNB Rock, and more. How did this all begin? Because I know mean technically. PNB his, mean his brother. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. I yeah, he, he has he has Philly like he's okay. calling Philly. I'm right glad now. I'm glad you yeah. called me out on that. So do your research, Bobby. I wasn't <laughs> <laughs> sometimes. I'm pretty good. I get everything right, but sometimes right. I mess up. Well, uh, I mean, outside of Philly, it's like when you say PNB, they think of rock for sure. Yeah, you know what I mean. But yeah, his bro- his brother's doing really well in Philly and okay. like the, the tri-state area. So you're working. You clearly have established yourself. You're working with these big artists. That means that they see the talent in you, which mm-hmm. means that you've clearly put in the work to get to this point. Mm-hmm. What really inspired it all? Because I know you taught you talked mm-hmm. about you know getting a full ride to college, the dancing, and mm-hmm. can you remember like that first moment where you're like, this is this is what I'm supposed to do? Make music. Probably like fifth grade, man. Was yeah, when I, was when that I, young? Yeah, I, I like I just started playing cello. Like you know, in fifth grade they they have like the assembly. Yep. At least they did in Philly, where it's like, yo, you can pick an instrument. Here's like the string stuff. Here's the brass stuff. We'll show you how it works. I wanted to do bass really badly, and there was no more spots. They put me on cello. First time I played the cello, my teacher was like, and in school was like, I gotta set you up with a private teacher. I think you could do something. Already um, they could see it in you. Mm-hmm. Wow. It was around when Shrek One came out because I remember I had a, t- a <laughs> tiny Shrek piano one. and um the song I'm a believer that I'm a believer. <laughs> I just yeah, played yeah, that yeah. by ear on the piano one day. My mom was like, "What the hell did you just do?" And I was like, "This is the song from Shrek." She's like, "Oh, well, gonna give you lessons." You know what I mean? Like that's crazy. Um, and just listening to music and that inspired me because I thought cello was lame to play guitar and I was like, "Yo, I should do something with this." I started getting super into rock music and and rap music and Tony Hawk soundtracks. Yes. Like, Definitely led me yeah. to this point right now. So shout out Tony Hawk. Shout out Tony Hawk. <laughs> right. Damn. Yeah. So it's been a long time that I was like, yo, I want to be a rock star, man. And, and along this way, have you always known like this is where you're supposed to be making music, making yeah, music? Yeah, I've been living like this, like totally. The blinders like, on. Yeah, so I, I'm gonna make music somehow. The way has definitely changed, but it's always been like I want to do music. Man, that's incredible. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, 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 I'm just sitting across from somebody that tried a lot of different things, but never found that thing mm-hmm. and it 
it blows my mind just because to think of how somebody like yourself, I don't, no regrets about my childhood. I would not be where I'm at today. I right. love, I've been living you a hell of a life. You time like that. Yeah. yeah. But I just, I, I look at it through the lens of like, you are somebody that saw from such a young age, this is what I need to do. Mm-hmm. That's in like incredible to me that somebody like yourself is able to figure that out. That's so young, mm-hmm. you know, because Thank what, you, what is the path that you would have went if you hadn't realized like, no music? Idea. yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Obviously you can debate that all day long and, well, I could have done this or I could have done that, but mm-hmm. I think a lot of that was from my dad dying though. Like he doesn't, he never knew I played music. You know what I mean? He would come in. We had, I've taken one guitar lesson my whole life and it was, a, it was with my brother and my dad. We drove like 40 minutes to this uh, music and art center and we all quit the same day. We're no like, yo, way. screw this. No we're way. never going to get Why this you, done. You guys just didn't like it? Or? None of us could figure it out. Like, <laughs> we're like, what the hell is going on? Like, so I just had the acoustic guitar in my house doing this because it was a small guitar. Yeah. I was super just small. A little, just a little yeah. guy. So when I started doing cello, I was like, yo, cello's so lame. Like, I need an instrument that's going to get me girls. Not knowing cello gets you way more girls than guitar. Because no one plays Cause cello. Because nobody plays it. Um, that's the bit. That's the bit. Yeah, that's the, the big violin body. that you the play like this. Body. Yeah. Um, I just started teaching myself guitar, like from that. So I think like my dad dying because he used to. He also used to come in just like strumming open strings, singing Willie Nelson to me. So I guess when he kind of passed, I was like, "Yo, you got to carry the torch." Almost yeah, let's and get keep, it. And yeah, keep going. I was like, "I have all the utensils. Like, why not?" And like, I f- maybe subconsciously like seeing like how life can just like disappear like that. It's like do what you want. Like yeah. I would much rather do music and be poor than do something I don't like. And I've already made it my job. It's been my job for like three years. So man, that's incredible, man. So it's like, you can do whatever you want in life. You know what I mean? Yeah. How did you teach yourself these instruments? Cause that's, mm-hmm. I mean, it's pretty impressive to teach yourself how to play guitar, cello, all these. Thank you, man. Um, well, I mean, obviously there were some classes you said you were, you were taking yeah, in cello, high school. Cello's always been lessons. Um, piano, I started teaching myself and that went to classical and then to jazz. Like I kept, I guess graduating from teachers like my first teacher was like yo i, I don't know like how to teach him anymore let's get him a new one mm-hmm. and then that turned into another one and he's like yo let me get you this guy and my last teacher was incredible i didn't graduate from him he, <laughs> i don't think i could ever he was like the most <laughs> incredible piano player i've ever met but you know you just get busy you know 50 dollars an hour can wow. become a lot you yeah, know what i mean especially if you're up. moving around so it's like yo and plus jazz i don't like i like jazz like and what it can teach you but i don't like p- listen to it you yeah. know what i mean so yeah how it, yeah. how has how knowing all these instruments helped you because obviously as a producer you are making the beat you're making mm-hmm. really the whole production before the artist steps in how is that it's just like a super easy gateway like if someone's like yo i want to make something triumphant i already have like eight different chord progressions that could satisfy that you know what i mean and kind of just switch them up or like you know if I'm playing something like, yo, what if we did a different chord here? Like, it, I already have, like, the foundation, you know what I mean? Because, like, you know all the chords. Yeah. You know, worst comes to worst, it's like, yo, every beat is, like, four chords anyways. I could just go through every Beatles song ever and just, like, make a beat. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like straight up a map. So, yeah. like, make You have it all the tools that right. you would ever need. The only thing is sometimes it can be like you're thinking inside the box too much because it's like, you know, you have all your tools. Like, music isn't, like, a straightforward thing, but... I would say it definitely helped. Cause yeah. it's like, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, you can cook right? up anything you want. And it's like if I'm first linking with an artist or producer and you want to like impress them, be like, yeah, I'll bring out the live cello. You know, that's, that's like so my go to. I'll be like, yeah, let me just bring this out real fast. <laughs> that's incredible. Even I see not I like on your Instagram post, you have like you mm-hmm. a, a record, somebody's song on the back on your plane, right. right on beat to it. And it's like, man, that's, what? that's so fun. What? And that's a way to like, link with more famous producers and stuff too like if i do a famous song and i tag the producer they'll be like what the hell yeah like i've sent packs like um packs like um a list of beats you know what i mean like a lot of producers will want like drums or they'll want like melodies people always hit me up for melodies like yo give me like five cello melodies and i'll add drums and that's all for me just like playing on instagram so it's like a flip see you know what i mean you, you use, you're using the social media to your advantage exactly you have to yeah What's something that you've learned through music that you've translated into your personal life? I guess confidence. Like, you got to be confident. I think I learned that recently. You know what I mean? Like, um, I was always, like, kind of insecure. Because, you know, you're putting, like, your your passion on the line. You're putting you know yourself I mean? out there. Exactly. Completely. 
But um, you'll never make it anywhere in music if you're not confident. And that taught me to be a confident, more confident person. I'm still working on it, but that's like the biggest lesson for sure. Like, How do you think you build your confidence? Try to like, I mean, I think meditating, honestly. Like, it's such a hippie answer. But I started going to the gym recently and, and the sauna at the end when you're just like alone with your thoughts in a hot ass room. Mm-hmm. You like, you'll find out about yourself. Yeah. And, like, always think, like, I don't know. I've, like, had a few out-of-body experiences, I feel like, doing that, which is, like, weird to me. No, it's not. And it's like, yo, I started meditating. You can probably. see, you can yeah. see yourself in someone else's eyes, I feel like, and you're like, yo, I can do this. Like, that's been a major help. Yeah. The sauna is really important, and I, mm-hmm. I, I do the same thing. I use, I, I go to gym every day, usually, like, in the mid-morning. Mm-hmm. I used to go early morning, like, 6 a.m., ass crack at dawn. I was like, I can't do wow. this anymore. Yeah, it was good because it was, like, the first thing in my day, and I liked it because I, w- I wouldn't talk Start to anybody. Day, right. You just get to the gym, work out, and by mm-hmm. the time I even text somebody or talk to somebody, I've been up for two and a half hours. I already had a good workout. You're refreshed. Yeah. No but, grumpiness. Yeah, exactly. And then I flipped it and instead used the early morning to, like, get projects and, you know, stuff done on my computer and then mm-hmm. go, like, mid-morning. But uh, I've always hit the sauna. And mm-hmm. I meditate in the morning too. So That's I meditate good. in the in the beginning of the day. That like sometimes it's tough, man. I yeah. don't want. I I got a million things running through my head. And I'm like just sit here and breathe for fifth right. ten minutes and just be like with yourself and then go about your day. And then I'll use the sauna as an, right. as like the part two. But uh, how do you start meditating then? Like what? Like everybody has different tools that they use. What mentally? Like how do you clear your head? You know, there's I mean? an app that I use. It's what called- is it? <laughs> About to, I'm about to plug them. If somebody from this company hears it, please hit me up because I'd right? love to like formalize <laughs> Get this a relationship. Sponsorship. It's called Headspace. Uh-huh. Uh, and essentially, it's 10 days free. You mm-hmm. sign up, and it's 10 minutes a day. And mm-hmm. after that 10 days, if you enjoy it and you want to continue with them, you have to pick a membership. You can do like for month to month or you can do a whole year. Mm-hmm. Within that membership, they have all these packs. Mm-hmm. Uh, passion or um uh, stress sports Mm -hmm. all these different like genre just areas and from there they teach you different things so essentially you put on your headphones or whatever and it's a guided meditation and the guy (laughs) the guy's voice is like perfect just soothing clean very just soft Mm -hmm. and he walks you through it and i'll say all right close your eyes i'm going to download and then it's like okay breathe in Breathe out. That's perfect. And then it like he'll go quiet for like twenty seconds, thirty seconds. You're just chilling, and he'll come back in. It, dude, it's incredible. Anybody incredible. listen, check it out. Headspace. But I've never thought about an app guided meditation. That. That's what it is. That's that's I'm gonna try that. That will help really take you to the next level because it gets to the point when you get as you get into the the meditation world and into like the packs, mm-hmm. uh, they teach you other things. Like how to how to note things when you're stressed out, you just note it and you throw it away. Like you're just noting in your mind that it happened. Wow. And then you just toss it. Or right? like a Dude, fe- like that's a feather. Incredible. Like a feather is <laughs> like a feather is against a glass. You just think of your thought and then you swipe it off. <laughs> That's it's crazy. crazy, dude. You might have just changed my life right now. When I <laughs> let me tell you right now, when I came across this platform, it changed my life. Mm-hmm. And I had a guy in my Uber a couple weeks ago, and he worked for Headspace. And I, I, I you would have thought he was a wow. celebrity. I was like, dude, I love you guys. I was like, <laughs> yo, your, your guys' stuff is great. It changed my life tremendously. Um, that's good, man. I'm, and yeah, I, I'm and I'm to, starting I'm to see people. It. Med- it's starting to become a bigger conversation, and I'm mm-hmm. trying to use this platform to talk about it when it comes up because it helps it, it helps we live in stress. a world man with so many stressors yes and it's hard to break off from social media and your phone buzzing all the time through the internet yeah it's yeah like made up world that yeah. like matters so much but you need it right you know it and that's one thing i've learned is just to turn off and put it down and work and you can get mm. to that text message. You can get to that email it's the next day. Me, but it's I, hard for me to put it down. You know what? I absolutely believe in There's going to be a question that I have for you, and, and I won't get to it yet, but uh, I'm curious to hear what you have to say. It's going to be something mm. within this realm. Um, what music producer live today would you want to work with and why? I mean, definitely like Kanye yeah. or Pharrell. I mean, that's like every producer. Who would you pick? The one, though. What would be the one? I know that's not an easy, easy question. Pharrell. Pharrell? Think Pharrell. Why? So cool, man. Like, he's just like, I don't know. I, he was like, I feel like he was like the first, like, 
black urban artist to come out with like 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 wearing like rock star type clothes you know what i mean and like shifting like culture so much you know what i mean yeah i think he influenced kanye in a, in a lot of ways maybe like he's like the og guy i feel yeah. like he's, he's <laughs> he had his hand is. so much stuff even the fact like like i saw when he was talking about uzi and he's like yo i feel like he was born in seattle in the 90s it's like yo i was, I was like around for that and he, and he was grungy like he's gone through so many phases he's He'll put like he's put the paint paint can and drop it like hot, hot because like he wanted to be in the neighborhood of Snoop Snoop and stuff. You know what I mean? It's dope, dope. Like yeah. I think he's he's like the good. It's a different sure. like, yeah. 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 yeah, He's worked with a lot of different artists too. Once he was one of those guys that you that can that can work with any artist. You know, it doesn't have to be just hip right. hop. He's worked once again J T and. Right. Uh, I just I, I I always always J T is like the golden guy. Like the mm-hmm. guy just is incredibly talented. Right. Yeah. Uh, him him Kanye and, and Jack Antonoff from Bleachers. They're like my top three. Top three. Mm-hmm. Hopefully one day you get to uh you get to work with them and you can be like, like yo I, I called in on this podcast. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it was for documented real. from 2017 that I said I wanted to work with y'all and here for it sure. is. You gotta manifest it. That's it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I saw you were recently nominated for best producer 2017. Philly Hip Hop Awards. Mm-hmm. Congratulations! Thank you, man. That's amazing. Why did Why do you think you got chose and not somebody else? As not at least as a nomination. Mm-hmm. I think because like, well, one like my studio's in my house. You know what I mean? That's my whole business. It's like in my mom's house, two flights up. You gotta talk to my mom if you get in the house. You know what I mean? <laughs> Security checkpoint. And I ha- and I get so much business from it still. You know what I mean? Like with all those like factors. You know what I mean? All those things are like I don't know if I want to be in like a suburban house meet a mom but i work with so many people in philly and a lot of them rely on me for like a sound you know what i mean like right now like a lot of people on my phone are like yo man when you get back in philly like i like i need to get in the studio i don't want to do it unless it's you you know what i mean wow so like i feel like i work with a lot of people and i climbed up like the the ranks i guess like the made-up ranks of philly like pretty fast as far as like gonna get beats to him gotta get beats to her you know and like it just leads to like the higher up artists like i did it really fast and we make stuff together. I think that's like a big part of it. Yeah. It's not like I send you a pack of beats. You're like, okay, ass. Okay, maybe. Wasn't the mood I was in for. You know what I mean? Like stuff like that, like the internet stuff, it's really personable, I feel like. So I think that's kind of, it's translated in the songs yeah. that people put out. And then that kind of led to like that nomination, you know? People are com- or, yeah, people are confident with working with you because they know what they're going to be able to, they're comfortable actually. I shouldn't say confident. Right. They're comfortable with working with you and why would they want to go to somebody else? Right, and you just comfortability that, is so big, man. Yeah, like in music, well, that, anything. That's but. what I realized too. Is that uh, talent obviously plays a, a big part in anything that you're trying to do, mm-hmm. but people just want to be around good people that they're comfortable Absolutely. with, you know. So if there's ten producers lined up and they all produce great music, they're gonna pick you mm-hmm. because they're comfortable with who you are, their personality. Right. I think a lot of times people think they just have to master that craft, or you talk right. about people being book smart versus. That kid who got like a C plus but had the personality, he's right. probably gonna be able to take whatever he's farther. trying to do farther because right. that's what it is. It's all about connecting with people. Yeah, it's, it's about building the right able relationships. To talk to people, man, understand, yeah. be sympathetic. Like, yep, that's such a big part of life. Yeah, if you can relate with people, I swear you can get anything done. And you really are the people you're around. Like, it's hard. It, it was so hard for me to realize that for so long, and I would always put myself in weird situations with weird people. It's like, yo, you just need to. Like two people you like is better than a whole bunch of people that are higher up than you that are, like disrespect you. you yeah, know what I mean, yeah, you gotta be with people you like that influence you. Mm-hmm. They're gonna push you to keep going to, with whatever you're trying to do. For sure. What do you see happening in the next six months for music? What's like for a, music in general, like yeah. the music industry for you? Oh, for me, okay. Um, what do you want to see happen in the next six months? I'm trying to like really get my artist stuff. Um, yeah. To be known more than my production. Okay. Um, I feel like my production will definitely be like my foot in the door and my writing. Yeah. Um, but I see, I see, well, now it's completely different. I'm, I'm in LA randomly. <laughs> so I feel like it's going to jumpstart stuff, but. Something's going to um, pop off. Yeah. I just, I just see success. You know yeah. what I mean? Whether or not I produce a hit for somebody, get a major placement, or like, you know, start getting more buzz as an artist yeah. in six months. I feel like one of those things is going to happen. Yeah. I've been having this feeling, like, and I'm, I used to be a really pessimistic person, but like four months ago, I was like, "Yo, I have a good feeling." And what I've had that what changed? What like triggered in your mind the optimism? I think it was the meditating, man. Like I think it was literally just like 
going to the gym, working out, and being alone with my thoughts. Like, you have to be alone sometimes and just think about life. What would you think? You know? Like, what would you think about? What was, like, going through your mind? Like, what do I really want to do? How can I do it? Um, there was a situation last year where, like, a higher-up person in the music industry kind of asked, like, who who is Andrew Miore? And I didn't really have an answer because I was so so in, in the, the race to work with everybody and become like, like a name that like I kind of lost sight of who I am. You know what I mean? And that like, it really fucked me up. I don't know if I can curse on this, but yeah, it's okay. yeah. I was like, what the hell? I don't like know who I am. I've spent all this time, like just working 14 hours a day in the studio, like losing sight of myself. I took like a week and a half off, was hiking alone. You know what I mean? Just kind of like being, trying to be with my thoughts. And then from that point onward, I was like, yo, I got to, really focus on what I want to do. And that turned into the gym and then the sauna like four months ago. It's just, I've been like, life is easy. Yeah. You know what I mean, like we have all these things around us that are like, yo, you can't do this. You can't do that. It's like, yo, like I was like, yo, I hate my engineering job. But then like for meditating, it's like, yo, I get, like you get paid. You, it's just your own job. Like I made this job. Like people like are always like, yo man, I want to be my own boss. It's like life is easy. I did that easily i could get to the next step easily you know what yeah. i mean so it's not as hard as we think it is I feel yeah like. and that was like a major change yeah i think so when you good. yeah i think the the meditation definitely teaches you that but also when you're very optimistic i don't know why but it just comes back you know like mm-hmm. the energy of the optimism of just looking at every every situation and looking for the positive for mm-hmm. some reason just maybe it keeps you more ready for opportunities Absolutely. Um, literally last night, I, I I was just telling Dylan this. I uh, I'm my own boss too, right? Driving Uber, mm-hmm. like I should not oh, complain yeah. about anything mm-hmm. at all. Sometimes I do. I'm sitting there like I just want to be to the point where I'm making money doing this for a living. I, mm-hmm. I get impatient for very small portions of the month, and mm-hmm. the rest I'm very content. I'm like, I got this. It's all about you know progress, and. Uh, I told myself, I was like, I got to be optimistic, you know, like Mm -hmm. things are going to turn its way. And I, within, dude, within that day, I ended up meeting two people that potentially could be podcast guests instead of them just getting in my car and just saying, Hey, how's it going? Good. How you doing? Cool. And then just driving and just being lost in my thoughts about Mm -hmm. why am I, why am I doing this? I'm too good to be driving. I was like, you know what? Make the best of the situation I'm in right now. Absolutely. Hey, how's it going? And it's not that bad. And it's not that bad. You control when you work. Exactly. That's dope. I mean, have your parents ever told you, like when you were younger, change your attitude? This. They definitely. That would always change your make attitude me and like maddest. change change yeah change your attitude and, and and it's like you see the world differently too right or something right. like change your attitude. Yeah, my yeah. mom would always be like change your attitude. Or I'm gonna change it for you. And, I, and that would always make me so mad. I'd be like, don't tell me to change my attitude. It made me more mad, but it's like, yo, that's all you have to do. Yeah. Like, it's so simple. You know what I mean? Like, when you go through your day, like, be conscious of what's going on around you. Don't be too in your head. You know what I mean? Be present. Mm-hmm. Meditation. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> be present. Just be present. Focus There's one on lesson what you're doing. anybody can learn from this podcast is to start meditating. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we talked about it quite a bit. Right. We definitely talked about it quite a bit. Uh, kind of going back to, like, the phone's ringing. Millions of things are happening around. You're getting emails. Mm-hmm. How do you get focused when you know you have to get something done? How do you get yourself focused? Hmm. I don't know, man. I just have always been like super self-motivated. Like whenever, like, like I feel like I prioritize pretty well. Whenever something hits me, like, yo, I gotta do this now. I'll, I'll just zone in and do it. Like I always have. I don't, I don't really know how I get in that space, but it's just like a, like a switch almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like, cause I'm like super meticulous. Like I used to have terrible OCD. Like if I had to do something, it would just be in my head all day. You know what I mean? Like, If I had like this podcast three years ago, like I know I gotta be here at three thirty. I couldn't get anything done yeah. in the morning because my mind would just be just be there. Oh wow, be there. okay. Yeah, so I feel like that translated into just. It's good to have a certain level of OCD for sure. Because yeah. I find myself, I constantly am thinking about what I need to do today, what's coming up. Mm-hmm. I, so I always tell people like write out a list of things you need to do, and I don't necessarily need to do that because. I'm literally OCD and I think about things all Mm -hmm. the time. Like podcast today and then I'm going to do this and then tomorrow this is happening Monday. And you log it so well. You log it that you're like, I don't need to visually see it. Like me actually visually or writing it down just doesn't help. It's just causing me more frustration because I'm like, why am I doing this? But 
obviously some people that might not be so OCD, you write it down and it's easier for, for mm-hmm. you to remember. But I guess what I'm trying to say is the OCD in you obviously helps because right. yeah. you see what you need to get done. I'm more likely to remember anything I have to get done over like a memory. Yeah. Because of that. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. What do you think is the hardest part about following a passion? Not listening to other people. You know what I mean? Like, or knowing what advice to take. You know what I mean? Everybody around you is going to have an opinion. I see it all the time with rappers that come to the studio. It's their friends that just totally mess up their whole careers. You know what I mean? Like, it's the people around you. Like, everybody has their own opinion, but they might not know, like, what your true goal is. You know what I mean? So, it's filtering what information, not being too proud to accept information from other people that might hurt you. You know what I mean? Emotionally. I say that's, like, the biggest thing. Yeah. Let the good stuff keep yeah. you feeling, but if it's if it's yeah. bad, I mean like, like um, you you have different tastes than other people. You know what I mean? Like, there's been people around me, like my best friends, that don't like my music or the style I do. You know what I mean? And that's fine. So when they give me advice, I have to keep that in mind. But they might be right about something. You know what I mean? Or they could totally miss the point. You just have to be like super open for like advice, very much so. Yeah, just listen to what they have to say, but don't mm-hmm. take it too much. Yeah, to listen hurt. to all advice, but like try to think like is this really what i'm going for you know what i mean am i tripping you know what i mean <laughs> stuff like that like, I, say, I think that's don't the overthink it thing. too much right if you yeah. if, if you believe in what you're doing or creating is dope and you think it's great mm-hmm. then just stick to it you could right? give me one tip about a beat as someone and that's one thing people are always like yo you don't even make music you can't give me advice it's like yo these are people that listen to it the people that don't make it you could tell me something about my beats right now that could change my production for the better forever you know just that hasn't happened yet. Yeah. And I, I believe that, you know? Yeah. So it's just you got to listen to the people around you. It's also the way they they say it to you, right? The way they tell you. Right. Yeah. I could say, yo, your beats are trash. Mm-hmm. Or I could say, hey, I think you should consider doing this to your right. beats. That's two completely different approaches. Absolutely. And you're going to take it two completely different ways, even though the end goal of me saying there mm-hmm. needs to be, I think, a change. Yeah, emotion gets way too in the way. But you know what I mean? Being able to try to figure out good advice and bad advice, I try to think about all all of it no matter what. Like if someone says, yo, you're garbage or like doesn't sound like you or something like that, like I'll really think about it. I was like, is it me? Are they wrong? Like is it their perception of me? You know what I mean? How can I change that? So it's just about filtering what's around you, yeah. I think. Imagine tomorrow you have the opportunity to teach a 45-minute lesson to the entire world. Everybody's going to be tuning in. They got their oh, MacBooks man. up. They got their iPads out, their cell phones. 45-minute lesson, and you get to teach them anything that you have learned along this journey so far. That's a crazy question. What would the lesson be? To be confident and not doubt yourself. Like, my personal biggest struggle in life. You know what I mean? I would try to teach about, like, trying to overcome that and just going for something you love. You know yeah. what I mean? And just being in it 100%. That's probably what I would talk about. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's key, man. Right. You have to have, Absolutely. you have to be confident in what you're doing mm-hmm. completely. Cause if you, if, if I can tell that you're completely confident in what you're doing, mm-hmm. but if somebody isn't, it's very easy. How am I supposed to believe in them if they don't even believe in themselves? I guess. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I always try to view it like from an outside thing. Like I like the artists I like because they're just them. You know what I mean? Like they're not trying to be something else. Like I believe what they're saying. I connect with it. I gotta be the same. You know? Yeah. If you could change any one thing about yourself, what would it be? Hmm. Hear Dylan singing yeah. the other <laughs> one. <laughs> He's killing it. Um, whew. I would probably change. I don't know if I would change anything. Can I say that? You can say whatever you want. This, yeah. I'm asking you a question. You give me whatever I don't answer. know if I would change anything. Like, it's definitely been like a rough journey. There's stuff that like I'm not fond of about myself i feel like everybody has their insecurities but the whole point of life what's is, how about this how about this instead of what would you change what mm-hmm. do you think you need to work on how about that okay what i need to work on changing is completely different right you, mm-hmm. you want to change you want it's almost like you want it's it. like you regret shit in yeah your life yeah no we're not talking we're not like no regrets on this podcast right something that you think you need to just work I just on just pitch my phone on the ground i don't regret <laughs> that you don't that. <laughs> right, my man was fact. so fired up off a beat he threw the damn phone to the ground no way anybody will see that but it's very messed up <laughs> hold up if, if you're watching visually this, this man right here just wasn't completely like that. shattered the phone there's a whole video um yeah how about something you, if, if you you had to work on what, mm-hmm. what's one thing that you think you would want to work on right now 
Hmm. I guess that's also a good question. These are all great questions. Good job. Um, <laughs> There's nothing better than when somebody <laughs> says great question. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's like when you like somebody's like, yo, fire beat. Right. You're like, yes. Yeah, it's like, damn. Change yeah, I worked hard on these. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I'm trying to work on right now is um, being more open-minded, like listening to music that I don't normally like and try to pull stuff from it. You know what I mean? I think you can learn more from the stuff you don't like, maybe, than the stuff you like. Yeah. So I'm trying to like submerge myself in different environments and and learn from it yeah you know what i mean and that's hard it it's is hard, hard. To do stuff you don't like it is and be confident going out places alone you know what i mean learning about yourself that way yeah you know what i mean Everybody's throw yourself like, in an environment and just connect yeah right i don't think there's anything weird with like going to a movie theater alone or eating alone at a restaurant and i feel like no one would do that and i've never done it yeah. but it's like uh, maybe i should like you gotta like yourself yeah enough to spend i think time. that goes back to the confidence Right, absolutely. I think that goes back to the confidence. Yeah. Like I was talking, I, I feel so confident in myself right now that I almost. I hope can tell too. That good. <laughs> that, see, that's what I love. I just hope that it doesn't that people don't come off as like all oh, this cocky ass dude who just thinks he's yeah. high. It's man, I'm more humble than ever. I right. am it's very a total difference. Yeah, like, yeah, I, I, I don't carry myself any differently. I just feel like I can execute any opportunity. Put me in front of a camera right. right now. I'm the young Leo. Like, I, right, absolutely. I have the confidence that I can accomplish anything right. in this world. I mean, right the now. first time I went to LA, I came here and I was like, "Shit, I, I'm terrible." Second time I came here, I was like, "Nah, I think we're on the same level." This time, I'm like, "Yo, I can do whatever I want." Yeah. I feel like my homie Ryan Oaks. Shout out Ryan Oaks. Shout out Ryan Oaks. Um, He's been on the podcast. He taught me a lot about that. Just like, he has a whole crew, like he lives off of the music he makes. You know, I live off engineering for people and making their beats but i don't quite live off the music that i make and not, yet, not yeah, yet not yet not yet i know it's gonna happen but he kind of taught me that's possible you know what i mean so yeah yeah it's we all about that <laughs> all about that <laughs> shout out it's all friends. about that um is there anything else that you do i i try to always ask people about like their day-to-day -day, their daily routine because i find it interesting interesting to hear mm -hmm what people do that helps them become su successful. You talked about mm -hmm. going to the gym religiously, meditating mm -hmm. now. Uh, is there anything else that you add in your day-to-day -day routine that kind of helps you keep moving, whether it's inspiration Something I started or... uh, doing is I won't start my work until noon. Um, I want to wake up. Uh, plus, like, I, I might be working till like, 4 a.m. 4 a.m., <laughs> 5 a.m., right? I need to wake up and have, like, a nice breakfast. Like, okay. I'll be grumpy while making it. Yeah. You know, my roommate actually has been telling me like, dude, you're grumpy as hell in the morning. I, but I'm always like, I always think like, yeah, I'm just, I feel irritable. Like people make me mad. Yeah. But like thinking outside myself, yeah, I'm grumpy. Yeah. I'm just a grumpy guy in the morning. That's okay. But like, yo, if I got to make a good breakfast with a coffee, sit in front of the TV, watch By yourself. Like, yeah. Or with somebody, it doesn't matter. Okay. Because okay. um, my roommate will be up too sometimes. Um, <clears throat> We'll just watch like some dope TV, some stuff that would inspire me. Let me just have 20 minutes of breakfast, mm -hmm. you know, kick my feet up, yep. drink the coffee afterwards. That like gets my day going yeah. perfectly. It's like getting you ready. It's prepping you for, right. Yeah. Have, by, the time have some you, moments. by the time you step in to really like clock in right. and start working, you've and that's already so been natural. Up. Like, you know, before we had like, like this world with like our jobs and all that, like you would just wake up, you eat, you know what I mean? Just like, I feel like it's unwinding from the world. It's like, yo, I wake up blank slate, not thinking about life, and then like noon onwards, it's like, yo, let's go, let's kick ass, right? Yeah, yeah. I think that's really important. Yeah, get up early, absolutely. Kind of just get your. Well, it doesn't have to necessarily. I don't mean early, like like you said, you're up till. You're on that hit that music grind, right. you guys. I got a text from you at four thirty in the morning. Your schedule, if, but if I didn't get up, stay up, prep so yourself late. Yeah. for the day, and mm -hmm. then attack it, and yeah. what's ahead of you. What do you think it is your purpose? My purpose. Yeah. I don't know. I think I could. I think my purpose is to. I don't know. I th I want to change the sound of music. You know what I mean. I feel like there's a lot of artists now that are shifting like, the sound, and I just want to be a step in that. You know what I mean. I feel like I learned about so much different kinds of music. Whether it's a collab or by myself, I want to like change, it farther. I want to push it further than it's been pushed before. Keep pushing the envelope. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's. I mean, that's what the great. The greatest do they push right. it? They don't. Exactly. They don't sit and just ride right. the wave. They create the new. And wave. I guess on a smaller scale, maybe bigger scale. I don't know because I always think like music first. But you know, if I can help kids, you know, with themselves, you know, 
tell them about my struggles and they can relate, you know, cause we all, I feel like people all want the same things yeah. on a basic level. If I can help someone get through depression or like anxiety or something, then yeah, you know, I see that as my purpose too. Yeah. Inspiring others. That's right. what I try to do. Just pay it for right. You know, absolutely. There's other kids out there that I think back to who I was 10 years ago. You know, mm-hmm. I wasn't this confident. <laughs> Believe me. Right. I haven't been this confident since out the womb, man. When mm-hmm. I was a kid, people would call me big head and I, I used to take that at heart. Me too. Yeah. I, have a, I have a humongous head. See, you know what? All right. them haters out there watching now. What's yeah. up, baby? We out here in LA. We're talking in mics. <laughs> We're talking in mics. Um, before I get into closing questions, this is when I reverse the role. Mm-hmm. I allow my guests to end up. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Went way too fast. I allow my guests to ask me any one question. Mm-hmm. It could be about something you want to know about me, something we talked mm-hmm. about today. Mm-hmm. Any one question, fire away. Hmm. I mean, yeah. I mean, I guess I would ask what your purpose is. I mean, I was thinking about it earlier, and I was like, yo, I want to ask, like, where do you see yourself? But I think this is a bigger question. Like, yeah, is it the podcast? Like, is that is that like your purpose, just talking to people and, and learning from them, or is there something bigger planned? Or like, what's your idea? My idea is that the podcast has really it started. It's like the first domino. Mm-hmm. It really finally. I, as I told you earlier in the podcast, mm-hmm. grew up trying a lot of different things. Played, did guitar for a couple couple oh, yeah. years. Was trash. I feel this. bad for my father. He used to bring <laughs> me to guitar lessons every Wednesday or Thursday or whatever. And man, I did not put in the, the effort. Um, I tried basketball, soccer, golf. I tried different sports. I tried drums at one point. I can see you golfing. I was nice, man. Young Tiger <laughs> Woods out here just playing, killing it. Um, but no, honestly... Uh, the podcast, I think, I think my ultimate purpose is people, mm-hmm. is to be somebody that makes people smile. You know, You're already doing it. Pam. Yeah, I'm How? trying. I'm trying. <laughs> and, and I mean that in the, I mean that in the sense of it gives people hope. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Like I, I really, I've always been a people's person. Mm-hmm. I've always been somebody that just enjoys people, enjoys conversations, mm-hmm. enjoys meeting new people. I don't know. It's always been about people. And the podcast really has just became that platform where I've now been able to really formalize, package it, and put it out there to the world as something mm-hmm. digestible. And right. hope that whoever listens to it is enjoying it. Maybe he's getting inspired. Maybe he's helping them get through something tough in their life. I don't know. I love it so much that I, I just think it's cool to connect with really passionate people. And that's mm-hmm. like something that I, I just want to surround myself with for the rest of my life is just passionate people. Cause I think it's, it's just super inspiring, mm-hmm. but it's almost like the podcast has became the engine for everything else. And I'm just, like I said, put me in front of a camera, put me in any environment to try something new. And I'm willing to throw myself out right. there. I don't care if I fall and fail. Like, I don't That's care like confidence. that because exactly yeah. it goes back to having confidence. I, I will throw myself out there and if people stand around and they point and laugh, I do not care. Right. I do not care. It's about me. This is right. the Bob A show. Throw right. myself out there. I'm just going to try things. Absolutely. Um, but I don't know. I think my, I think my true purpose is people showing them what, what can happen when you, when you work hard, when you believe in yourself, when you're confident in anything that you do, when you ignore all the negative stuff, when you have a dream, mm-hmm. I if I can be an example, awesome. Like that's that's really super mm-hmm. cool to me. Um, and just enjoying the ride. I don't know. This oh, yeah. you know who knows where this is gonna go. You know, exactly, I, yeah. I'm not gonna say this is what I'm doing for the rest of my life. I'm not mm-hmm. gonna say that because I don't I don't know. I don't know where I'm gonna be in ten years. I don't know where I'm gonna be in six months. But right. I'm making sure to just throw myself out there and, and oh, enjoy yeah. as many outlets as I possibly I mean, shit, can. Man, you're doing it. Zero, like literally, like because I, I met Dylan, like relatively recently. Yeah, like, the I show think... that him and um, Zero had at Voltage Lounge. Yeah, yeah, I was down. That was uh, that was back in March. Because mm-hmm. you played with Zero guitar, right? You yeah. were up on stage. Yeah, I remember yeah, that. We I, were down there for the I tour. I met you, but we didn't like, real, talk or yeah. anything. I yep. think I got the shirt from you. Or yep. whatever. Yeah. Zero pa- passed off the shirt. Zero kept saying like, "Yo, Bobby's like the best guy ever. Like, you gotta meet him." He was talking you up like, "No crazy. way!" Yeah. And then you didn't come to the uh, 
we went to uh, get cheesesteaks with Dylan after, and he didn't come, and I was disappointed. I was like, yo, Zero's been talking to this guy. Damn. Up. Like, I never got to talk to him, you know what I mean? So, And he's always like, yo, he's like my favorite person. Wow. So, I appreciate that. <laughs> man, I appreciate that, man. I, like I said, I just I try to just bring light to people. I, right. I hope that if somebody's down and I and they see me walk into a room, they see an Instagram post by me, they – they see a YouTube video by me, it, it makes them smile. For me, right. just being a, a jackass oh, yeah. and making fun of myself or it's listening to conversations like this where I can really connect with people. Mm-hmm. Um, just having fun, man. Just having fun. But shout out to Zero. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, the, right. the words don't the, – the, that shit like that doesn't go unappreciated. Uh, closing questions. Mm-hmm. People love this one. I think the other listeners really, really care for this one. Imagine there's a picture frame on the wall. Mm-hmm. You, you could put the picture frame on the left okay, of you. Right. Yeah. Picture frame right there. Ten years from now, you're inside the picture frame. Mm-hmm. What else and who and where is this picture? You're in it. Ten years from now, what else do you see in that picture frame with you? Hmm. Damn, that's a, that's the craziest question I've ever been asked. Possibly. Um. Yeah. My bad. You good? I was looking at the fake uh, yeah. the fake frame, <laughs> <laughs> trying to see it on the wall. I can see it, but I can't. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I see like nature around it, man. I love traveling. You know, I I want music to be able to get me to be able to just see the world. Um, like I see mountains. I see like my friends that I've always had. You know, the ones that came up with me, just enjoying life. Yeah, that's what I see. Yeah, that's super cool, man. I love traveling. That's like yeah, yeah. I love it. If you can make, if you can take music to the level where it makes you travel. Mm-hmm domestically great in the country mm-hmm. amazing but even to the point where you're flying out to europe australia right i man. mean that to me is it's incredible anything it doesn't have to be music it could be anything if you're going to another country to right. do your thing mm-hmm. that's that's it's amazing. something man that is yeah. that's an impact that is to another level yeah. but um i see the mountains here i'm like yo i'm trying to climb these yeah. but I know no one's now to do that. Slow and steady process, yeah. my friend. Slow and steady process. Mm. Where can people find you on social media? Um, at Andrew Miore. Andrew, like the name, and then M E O R A Y. Okay. Everywhere. Instagram, Everywhere. Yeah. Twitter, Twitter Facebook. SoundCloud, Facebook, yeah. Pokemon, Spotify. Spotify, Pokemon Facebook, ladies and gentlemen. That's you definitely have to Pokemon. Give me there. a poke. <laughs> See what happens. <laughs> Give a slide to the DM. Help him get his streams up on, on Spotify. Give him the yeah, just started mine. Yeah. yeah, just started my Help Spotify. Out. It's gonna be lit. It's gonna so be lit. Might as well be join one of the first. Now while be you one still of the- can. <laughs> <laughs> while you still can. Right. Last question for you. Mm-hmm. What two to three pieces of advice would you give to somebody that is trying to find their passion, trying to find their purpose, but they haven't necessarily found it? Hmm. Don't overthink, because you probably already kind of know it. I feel like deep down. Um, don't let people tell you you can't do it. And um, hmm. I mean, be confident. I mean, that's the one. Yeah. You know, if you just be confident, and when you figure it out, you're gonna be able to do it. Anybody can do it. Yeah. So your example of it. Right. Well, hopefully, I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully. But I know I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I love it. So let's get it. Awesome, Andrew Miare. My Th- guy. Hey, thank you for coming on, my man. Let's get it. Awesome. We'll catch you guys next time with your favorite being a man. See you later. Thank you for taking the time to watch my video. I really do appreciate it. If you could leave a one sentence review in the comment section below about what you'd like, what you'd like to see in the future, that would be awesome. And if you really want to make me happy, please subscribe to my channel so you can stay up to date when Bob Bay drops a new video. We'll catch you guys next time.